very God, hard. It's very kidding. difficult. It's shocking. At least you look more relaxed and laid back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Sorry about that. To be honest, I can't believe that in 33 episodes, that is the first time that I've done that. If you're not familiar with the Google Hangout uh, platform, there's a giant red button right next to all the little pictures that you have to click on when somebody's talking to make sure that when you're watching, uh, you see them. So there's more to this than... I mean, it's not just like we're just talking. I'm actually controlling a lot of things in here and making sure that the right people are talking and you can see the right people when they're talking. But like I said, there's a big, giant stop broadcast button in the middle of all of that, and I just misclicked on it. I've never done it before. I can't believe that this is the first time. But uh, And this is I couldn't have possibly picked a worse time to make that happen because I'm really, really disappointed that we uh, missed out on all that information that... I mean, Robert just kept going, too. But we're going to try and get things back rolling, get back into the... Uh... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed in you, Paul. I'm disappointed in really myself. Are you kidding me? It, it, it felt like watching a soccer game, and he was just about to kick it, like, oh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, the TV goes dark. It's like, no. <laughs> You're excused, Paul. All right. You're doing a great job, man. I, I, I applaud you for doing this every day, and um, I know it's a big sacrifice, uh, and I believe it's going to pay off big big dividends for you. Oh, so, uh, I'm keep hoping. going with it. Yeah. One way or another, it's going to have something good is going to come out of it. You know, I mean, I, yeah. I've just that's something I've always wanted to do. You know, I've been a or I've always listened to podcasts and talk radio and stuff, and when I realized that I could do something like this, it's like, oh my gosh, this is going to be cool. Oh, we lie you. No matter what, it's fun. I don't care. <laughs> Either way, but yeah. Uh, anyway, what we were talking about before I completely dropped the ball on that, uh, RB3 was talking about uh, some of the private label stuff, like some of the ideas that he has uh, for like how to pick an item that you could uh, market as a private label on Amazon. And uh, I mean, I think it's really, that's kind of the toughest, like the biggest hurdle, you know, picking the right item, but uh, now just getting the idea, I think we got to the point where you were talking about your daughters, and you've got, uh, how many yeah. daughters do you have? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm actually uh, under a, a non-disclosure right now with a group that I belong to, so I can't even share much about my own stuff at this point, um, but I can tell you that... Um, you know, keep your eyes open. You can you can do some quick research. You can see what's selling, and um, you know. And the Gilmans are uh, were great great mentors uh, initially because they said, "Hey, Robert, keep your eyes open for stuff." And I was looking for something while I was on a business trip to buy for my daughters, and um, I couldn't find it. And when I finally did, you know, it was a product that was just like, "Oh my goodness!" You know, uh, it, they kept selling out on it, and. Um, and it's something that my girls, you know, kind of use all the time. So those are the kind of things you want to look for is uh, you can go to the Amazon hot sellers list. You can you can see what's selling and you can, you know, go to Alibaba and put an RFP, which is a, re a request for pricing or a requ RFI um, request for information, whatever you call it. That's really what Alibaba is, you know. Um, but um, I don't know how it's going to go. It may be a flop. I may ha I may ma I may not make any money. I don't know, but I will learn and um, I will find out how to make money with it. You know, eventually. And I think um, you know dealing with people in China is a different ball game, and uh, you are putting some risk out there. So um, you 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 need to have some money. You're willing to just kind of throw at this. Yeah. Um, and uh, one other thing, because I I do have to jump back into vacation. Um, International is hot on Amazon right now, and Amazon actually reached out to me last week and asked me to consider a, a international platform, and they're actually willing to walk me through and hold my hand. I mean, this is this is not normal for Amazon. Normally, you got to figure everything out, and you got to make cases, and it, it's just very difficult. You know, I see you guys nodding your head. Um, uh, so the other thing I'm working on simultaneously during Q4 while building my American business is international. And then if you tie private label to international, you start to see that there's just this huge opportunity that opens up. Um, so 
just kind of throwing that out there as some things I'm working on that I'll share with the group as I continue to learn these things. Yeah, the third world countries are no longer third worlds. So uh, you're going to be back on vacation next week, then, Robert? I'll, yeah, I'm. I'm heading back. I'll be. Uh, I'll be sourcing by Saturday. Again. Oh, okay, cool. So how about next week, uh, maybe Tuesday, we have you back on just for a few minutes so you can talk about the Black Friday experience when it's fresh in your mind, just to see like what kind of how you feel it, uh, if it helped your sales at all or anything. Yeah. So, yeah. Like for me, I'm I'm pretty small time on the selling. I mean, I don't, you know, my Amazon numbers are just okay, and my eBay mm -hmm. numbers are just okay, and yeah. I mean, I I don't see those huge jumps. Like a huge jump for me could be something as simple as you know I sold a three hundred dollar item, you know, and that's gonna make my that's gonna do this on my <laughs> numbers, you know. But yeah. uh, for somebody that's more consistent, doing the kind of stuff that you're doing, I I really want to hear from you. Yeah, and again, I'm really after consumables that are steady and build my foundation that way. But uh, I am enjoying some hits with some um, some frozen dolls and, and things like that. Um, last Sunday, um, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before, I hit 2,500 in a day, and I think I sold 30 Elsa dolls in about an hour and a half, and I made at least 20 bucks on each one of those profit after all my costs. Um, and then, and then I shot a video the next day, kind of going, "Hey, we hit our our uh, best day ever, 2,500 plus in sales." And then they restricted me on that product because it, somehow there was a restriction put on that one doll. Oh no! And um, I went in and called Amazon. I got some coaching from some some of my um, you know peeps, and they said, "Call Amazon and try to get uh, unfrozen on that frozen doll." And I did. It took them uh, 24 hours, and they turn around. They put me back on the doll. Almost all the other sellers are still restricted on it. It's the Elsa Glow doll. Uh, and so now I uh, am trying to find more of those. And last night we sold 10 of them at about $10 higher than we were selling them that last Sunday. Nice. Um, so last night we got a nice hit. So last week we hit uh, 10,200, I think, in sales for the week, which was cool. I'm sure. I'm sure Caesar had bigger numbers. Um, uh, but again, guys, this is my first Q4. I've never done this before. Um, so I, I, I want other, I want all people to know that uh, I just started this last November and I did it part time. Um, yeah, so someone else got restricted on that doll too. Listen, the moral of the story is you have not because you ask not. I called Amazon and said, unfreeze me, please, and they did. A lot of people would think, oh, I'm restricted, and they'll cry the blues and go, oh, Amazon sucks or Amazon stinks. You know what? Ask. Yeah, you have to get on the phone. You have to actually talk to somebody. And I mean, I did. Yeah. It, it it's works. a pain. It's a pain. Okay. But is it worth it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. it, it oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't be afraid to get on the horn, guys. I mean, pick up that phone and just dial the number. And I mean, once you get to a certain level, too, they start to give you priority on the phone. You know, like when I call eBay, you know, I'm a silver power seller, so they give me a number, another number when I call them, and they're like, "Here, we'll call you back uh, when so that I don't have to sit there on hold." You know, but Good um, for you. I Good mean for that's. You. I don't know if they do stuff like that on Amazon. It sounds like uh, when you hit a certain number that maybe they're a little bit more uh, proactive, but who knows? Nah, they're, they're, they respect nobody. They're all, everybody's sort of treated the same. Um, I'm sure there's some power billion, million sellers that maybe get a little better treatment, but not much. Yeah. You know what? The worst thing they can say is no. Yeah, exactly. Can't <laughs> then, you're, then you're no better off, you know. But at least, you, at least you can go to bed going, "I tried," you know. And 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 I didn't expect that I was going to get it, by the way. And in fact, I didn't want to call. And my VA who challenged me, she challenged me. I wasn't going to call. Um, she said, "Call him." I'm like, "No, it's it's going to be fruitless, waste of time." It 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 ended up being a very profitable phone call for me. Now, did you have to do anything when you called them besides uh, just showing them a receipt, or did you just tell them, hey, this is where I'm buying this that stuff, I know it's for real, and then they just went ahead and unlocked it? Yeah. I was already ungated in fro to sell Frozen anyway, guys, 
and gales. Um, but uh, this is a subgate, and it's a, you got all these subgates. You know, it's just like DVDs. You got to now get approved to sell DVDs over thirty-five dollars, and uh, on Amazon. And but then you you still go in and scan some, and they're still restricted because certain manufacturers will not allow you to buy it, even though you're ungated in DVDs and Blu-rays and video games. That's a category now that they've they've. They've gated. I hope you guys are understanding my terminology. If you yeah. if you're not, please learn it. Uh, we we talk about gating a lot on the show, so I think most yeah. people that listen know what gating means. But now they've got these subgates. It's just like this Elsa doll. I'm able to sell Frozen, but all of a sudden I was restricted on this one doll. So there's a subgate. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's the biggest. I think it's the biggest boon, like the best, the best thing for resellers that are willing to go out and get ungated for all this stuff. But it's also the biggest pain, you know. I mean, it's it's so easy to sit there and go down the line, go down the aisle, and it'd be nice to just be able to send in whatever you want. But you got to realize everybody else has is able to send whatever they want in as well. And I mean, anybody can sell on Amazon. And they're well, let me just can I just say something because I got to hop up. Sure. The, the people that are just trying to get beer money in, in college to flip stuff on Amazon, that's the kind of people they don't want on anymore. They want people like that are on this show serious about learning how to be professional resellers. That's why they're doing all this. So if you want to play the game, you've got to go through this sort of hoop jumping so that you can get in and play the game. Because And you should be glad about that because the easier it is – then anybody's going to get in there, and if you just need beer money, then instead of making $10 profit on an item, you're willing to make $2 profit. And you don't want that in Amazon, and neither does Amazon. Yeah, like that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, just retail, myself doing retail arbitrage, going down the aisle. Uh, you can hop off if you want to, Robert. I know you've got your vacation to uh, get back to, and we really appreciate you coming on. Can't wait to hear from you again. Hopefully we can talk to you again next week. And I mean, like I said, even if it's just for a few minutes, I just want to hear about uh, how your Black Friday went, and uh, then we'll go from there. But okay, great. I, I hope I have a good report for you. Good luck to all of you guys. I love y'all. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Robert. Robert I want to say thank you for doing what you did with uh, the Wounded Warrior Project. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. A, I've got a heart for uh, for that, and I'll, I'll maybe someday I'll share why. So okay. Hey, Peace, Robert. everybody. Robert, yeah. Robert, don't work too hard. <laughs> <laughs> you either, brother. <laughs> See ya. See ya, man. Yeah, so like he was saying about the whole ungating thing, I mean, just go down the – if you're new to Amazon, you're new to FBA, you're just getting started, go down the toy aisle and start scanning things and find out and see how many things are going for like a couple bucks over retail. Uh, and then go down to the health and beauty aisle and start scanning things in the health and beauty aisle, the places where you're gated, and see how many items you find that you can flip for three times what you paid. Uh, I mean, the the harder it is to sell certain items on Amazon, the harder, the more uh, items you're going to find in those categories to resell and make a profit on because not everybody can get in and do it. So it's really it's worthwhile to try and get them gated, but. And what I, I think they're just making uh, people jump through hoops, you know, to to become able to sell something because they want somebody that's serious. Yeah, exactly. They want serious people. So. But so many people are lazy, you know, and they're not going to make that effort because they're essentially lazy. Well, it's it's not just an effort. I mean, you do have to, when they say jump through hoops, it's, they're not well, easy. I know. I mean, I, I know the hoops and everything, but it, it, as long as you try, if you put forth a decent amount of effort, you're going to be able to get ungated. Yeah. But so many people, you know, if they even try it, period, they'll try it one time, and if they get turned down, you know, oh, well, they turned me down, I'm done. You can't, you gotta, you can't do that. You have to take it seriously and, and put out the money, you know, even if you don't, even if you don't make money on that certain item that you use to get ungated, who cares? You right. got ungated. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, if you got to go out and spend a hundred bucks to buy thirty of a bunch of bags of candy at three different stores to uh, get a re the receipts to send in to Amazon, then I mean, first of all, once they engage you, you're going to be able to send the stuff in. Don't buy stuff just for the sake of it. Find something that's profitable that you're going to be able to make money on. 
and then once they engage you, send it in, and that's it. But um, think about it. this is Christmas time. You're gonna be buying presents for for people, and and if you yeah. buy DVDs, hey, there's one receipt right there. Oh uh, well, you can't do it with DVDs. You can't just buy. You can't use store receipts for DVDs. I don't think. I'm pretty sure you have to take the next step up and actually uh, buy them from a actual wholesaler. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand. And I mean, it doesn't matter anyway because the prices on Amazon. Amazon's selling all those DVDs too. It doesn't make any sense to. Uh, if you're just doing retail arbitrage, you're not going to be able to find a bunch of DVDs for uh, cheap enough, like hot DVDs, cheap enough to resell from like a Walmart or whatever. You know, you got to buy it from a wholesaler. But anyway, back to sourcing and eBay. <laughs> so, Caesar, you were talking about some of your other sources. Now, besides like the trade shows and um, stuff like that, where do you get most of your product, would you say? Uh, most of it? Most of it, I would say, uh, sixty forty. I mean, a wholesale, and I, I mean, I do, I do, uh, what's you know, do online arbitrage whenever we're out and about. You know, I'll still look at deals, anything that's profitable, you know, to make a profit. You know, I still, I still get out there and look around. You know, depending on where I'm at. Even if I'm at, um, like say, um, you know, a Target or at um, Bed Bath and Beyond, wherever we're at, you know, I'll still, you know, pull out my phone and start checking certain things. And if I see anything that has a uh, resale value, you know, I'll jump on it. Just like that one day, I don't know if you guys heard, uh, there were some tablets and uh, big lots that retail on Amazon for, I think, $70, I remember, $70, and they were on sale at big lots for 34 And we were on a, on a hangout, and I, I went ahead and bought bought a few, but I went ahead and just told everybody, it's like, hey, you guys want to look at this as a bolo, jump on it. I mean, I bought a few. Right. Now, besides, now, when you say wholesale, are you buying just at trade shows, or do you get, no. the, or do you uh, have the, you just make your contacts with the wholesalers at the trade shows, and then when you need something, that you just get on the phone and call them, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, exchange, we exchange we exchange information, and then from there, you know, that's just whole, you know, as far as vendors for any upcoming, any upcoming new products coming up for the next year, you know, I'll get in contact with them. But as far as wholesalers, I mean, they're out there. Mainly in Los Angeles, you know, I'll go over there and uh, see what's there. Cause see, one thing that's unfortunate about wholesalers, not all the time will they put anything out there as far as online. You have to go in person and see what's out there, you know. So now, I'll get, I, I, you know, I may, I went ahead and created a, you know, call me if you get anything that's Disney related or Monster High or My Little Pony, like little certain thing that's hot right now. I'll tell them to give me a holler if they got anything that's new that, that fits in that category. They'll make it worth my time to go drive about an hour back that way, you know. Yeah. Now, the besides, point I'm going to go buy. I'm not going to go see. You know. Yeah. So besides Frozen, what else are you hot on for uh, holiday toys and items this year? Well, um, right now, as far as toys, it's just Disney, Monster High. I hope we're not doing a bowl of this, but Disney, Monster High, My Little Pony. Um, right now, it's it's pretty big on those uh, banner loops. You know, a lot of kids are into making uh, bracelets out of rubber bands, whatever that is. Bend the loops. Um, right now, the Walking Dead is still going on, so a lot of Walking Dead is selling. You know, you gotta, you guys gotta sell what's in. You know, what's what's in demand. You know, like the Walking Dead is going on. Uh, you got upcoming movies coming out that you guys should be already jumping on, like that one cartoon. Uh, I forgot what's it called. Um, that well, anyway, there's a cartoon that's out. Oh, you know, the, you, the new Disney one, Bay Six or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 that one. So you know, you, you guys just gotta jump in as far as what's what's in. Because once the market gets flooded, you have to get in and get out, you know, right away. Just like we were talking about Maleficent when it first came out, I was already at the Disney store buying all the dolls a week before the movie came out, and then two weeks after the movie came out, the market got flooded. So that's what I do. I like to be involved of what's in and what's in demand. You know, do I go and buy, you know, as far as you know, what the holidays? Do I go buy, you know, Disney or you know, toys, or do I go invest in a suit? You know, it all depends what your niche is, but at the same time, you have to you have to think about what the consumer wants, what they're looking for. Whether it's electronics, toys. Like I'm getting myself into electronics, but I just gotta be careful with that because I know there's a lot of horror stories behind that. But right now, it's just mainly toys, dude. Mainly yeah. toys right now. It's the holidays. So yeah, you're mostly doing like what? What would you say your percentage of toys is? And for things besides toys, what else are you? Oh, um, dude, like 80% toys right now. 80% toys. Yeah, and I'm talking about toys, like even uh, Minecraft, Ninja Turtles, I mean, everything, dude. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, everything. 
and it's all brand, almost all brand new in the packages. What you're dealing with. I mean, you're not going to thrift stores and buying stuff off the shelf in the little baggies or whatever. I mean, you're doing like 50 Ninja Turtles new in the box, like in the case or whatever, right? Yeah, that's all brand new stuff. I mean, we have two accounts. One account is for anything I'm sourcing from, you know, thrift stores, Salvation Armies, and then the other account is all from wholesale, brand new. You need to hook me up with some Minecraft stuff, Caesar. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> Minecraft is. It's pretty hot. It's still hot out there, you know, and it's 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 uh it's excuse my French, but it's stupid expensive, but it's hot. Yeah. My kid, you should see my kid. One of my kids' Christmas lists. There's, you know, like all the new Minecraft Lego sets. You yeah. know, I mean, he's got all kinds of Minecraft stuff on his list. My ten year old. It's. Yeah. I mean, Minecraft is huge. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, it is. AP wants to know if you avoid. Um, um, if you avoid vendors who require and enforce map agreements. Yeah, when he said map, so he's talking about like OSHA. Is that uh, what he's talking about? No idea. I think map isn't that a uh, manufacturer uh, guaranteed pricing or something like that. Like they make you. Oh, you know, where they have to set the prices. Yeah, they they no. tell you how much you have to sell it for. No, no, they don't care. To them, they don't care as long as you're 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 purchasing. At least the people that I'm dealing with, the wholesalers. They don't. They're just wholesalers. They're just selling it to you at a wholesale price because I'm promising to buy a certain quantity. Now I think that might be a requirement from distributors. No, I'm sorry. That might be a requirement from manufacturers. Yeah. Yeah, because they're like if you're you stuff at a retail price. Yeah, if you're selling it, if you're buying it directly from like Lego or something, maybe Lego yeah. says this is the yeah. main, this is the uh, retail price or the suggested retail price. This is how much you have to sell it for. When you yeah. drop the price, you have to do it on clearance and you know you can't advertise it whatever I think is you know that what's funny? manufactured you know what's funny? Advertisers? I'm sorry no, I was gonna say you know what's funny is that we were talking about this earlier and I didn't want to reveal the other person and suddenly Robert just jumped in dude <laughs> oh, I mean, well I knew it was coming on he told he promised me yesterday that he was gonna pop on and I mentioned it in the chat a couple yeah. times but, yeah. Uh, yeah he was <laughs> yeah, yeah I like I didn't want to say anything I just wanted like okay whatever a little teaser and he jumped in, and then he started saying, "I like, okay, well, fine, <laughs> cool." <Yeah. laughs> Minimum advertised price. That's what it is. I knew it was something with the advertised price and something that the manufacturer sets. Uh, yeah, it's manufacturer, not not wholesale. Wholesale is a to them do as long as you're still in agreement what you what you uh, noted that you promised to buy. They're good because if I go in there and I start, hey, well, I can't do it. They'll cut you off. Dude. They'll cut yeah. you off. Well, I know, like in the video game industry uh, there are a lot of times if you get say like you want to buy you know a modern warfare or the new modern warfare when it comes out the new call of duty and yeah. you want to make sure you have it on your shelf uh, to like at the day that it's released you're not allowed to sell it before that day and if you buy it from uh, certain manufacturers or certain distributors they'll make you sign agreements but I've got yeah. a friend who's got distributors who uh, you know he's not buying and Big enough quantity to uh, like you know he'll stop he'll drop five grand on a new release when it comes out and he'll sell it three or four days before it's released because he doesn't sign any of those agreements. I mean yeah. he just buys it from the wholesaler that will sell it to him and as long as he doesn't give up the name of where he got it from, it's not like anybody can do anything about it. I mean yeah. you can't tell where the person got it. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. As far, as far as Robert, I was piggybacking what Robert was saying. This is his, this is going to be his first um, black you know Black Friday or his first Q4 on Amazon. You know, I think he I think he's going to do very well. I, I I've heard horror stories off from FBA sellers that Black Friday is not as busy as people think, but I think it is. I mean I don't sound off FBA on FBA, so um, but I think he's going to he's going to do very well this this year. Well, one thing that I've been uh, hearing about a lot is like the brand new. Sealed items are what are hot right now. The pe people aren't looking for used stuff. They want brand new. They want. Uh, they don't want to go to eBay as much because they're kind of not trusting eBay. Amazon, you know, I. Amazon's weird because I mean a lot of the stuff that I've been sending into Amazon, I almost feel weird about it because you know they've got. It, it's kind of being put forward as you know a brand new item, but I'm still I'm sending in a you know, used N64 or something like that. I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as you're putting all the uh, pictures up and everything, but 
I mean, I almost yeah. feel like that's why people are willing to pay more for FBA because they feel like they're buying it from Amazon instead of a uh, some dude on eBay. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, I do. So I mean, the question is for all of us is like we don't we don't know what's gonna happen on Black Friday. You know, we might wake up to a lot of sales or not. I mean, we don't. I don't, it's hard to tell right now, but I'm still excited. I'm actually worried, but I'm excited, and because uh, I know what happened last year. But uh, yeah, this year, dude, I'm actually looking forward to it. See what happens, because right now we're just pretty much roll, rolling the dice, you know. Yeah, I think you're set up to uh, like just have a killer Black Friday this year, like just because of the types of items that you're selling, the types of items that you're really doing uh, well with. Like for me, I, I'm not expecting anything from Black Friday. Uh, I mean, it, I just don't think that the kind of stuff that I've got listed right now is the kind of stuff that people are going to be uh, knocking on the doors down. Like last year when I was doing a lot of Blu-rays and DVDs and yeah. a lot of like video games and stuff like that on eBay, my that late November into December and January was crazy busy for me. Like I was doing easily 10 to 20 items a day. I was having weekends where I was selling 40, 50 items just on the weekend, but... You yeah. Know, I've got, now that I've gotten away from that, I mean the the margins just weren't that great for me. I was I was buying directly from like video game stores and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was almost paying retail for a lot of the stuff that I was selling. I was willing to you know pay fifteen dollars for something and sell it for twenty five. You know, and I was doing yeah. that all day. So I mean, when you're willing to accept lower margins, then your uh, numbers are going to get a lot better, and you're going to be able to sell more, obviously. You're, right. And it offers more opportunity for sourcing, like the kind of uh, when you're out there, if you're willing to pay twenty dollars for something and sell it for thirty, then you're gonna find a lot more opportunities to buy, and uh, you know it's gonna be able, you're gonna be able to sell. It. But when you get to the point where it's like, well, I don't really want to buy anything for, I don't want to sell anything that I paid more than like a couple bucks for. You know? Yeah. Now your opportunities to buy just go like through the floor and plus the types of things that you're buying probably don't sell as fast so I mean you gotta look at both perspectives I'm I'm really thinking that I need to get back into what I was doing because it was working you know and I've just changed so many different things in the last six months uh, that it's I don't know it hasn't some things have worked for me some things haven't but you know just, uh, for me personally getting things back on track and uh, back into you know the numbers where I need to be. Right, right. Yeah, for anybody out there, I mean, if you guys feel that's too late to list or what have you, it's never too late. Just get on it and get on it right away, you know, because right now this is a time where everybody makes their, their income. I mean, as you guys heard me mention this before, there's people out there that make their year's income just in, the, in these three months, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they prepare as of January. They prepare all the way to now, dude, just building up their inventory, building it. And little do you know, they make their year's income in these three months, dude. And then what do they do? They take the rest of the year off and then do it again. Do it again. Exactly. So the more you list, the more you sell. Yeah, yeah, what a lot of people do. And when you say they're constantly listing and building up inventory, you mean they're actually or uh, they're buying they're out buying and everything. They're outsourcing all year, but they're listing yeah. it as they are sourcing and they're just getting it ready to go. They're, yeah. Uh, they're they're, it out there. they're in, investing, you know. There's mm -hmm. there's guys out there that I know that buy certain items that they'll hold on to it and wait until it's already, I guess you could say, discontinued, like it's limited time. Yeah. And then they'll throw it up in the market in fourth quarter and sell it for way more money. Yeah. And you're not, I mean, you talk, you hear talk about, you know, people buying, you know, a $20 bag of coffee, for instance, and then selling it three months later for $30. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a perfect example, dude. I mean, um, I mean, yeah. especially anything that's. I will tell you guys this from you know sourcing re retail arbitrage. Anything that's exclusive, whether it's from Target, from Walmart, wherever. Anything that's exclusive, I will strongly suggest jump on it because whatever is exclusive, it's not not all the time it's selling on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon doesn't have rights to that. If it's exclusive only Target or exclusive only Toys R Us or Walmart, no, it's not. It's not. Amazon cannot get their hands on that specific item. So what right. I will suggest: buy it, get it glue off, remove that ex, you know exclusive, and send it into uh, Amazon. That's a yeah. huge plus right there. That's the 
uh, one thing that we talk about a lot on the show is, uh, you know, when you're doing FBA, you always have to worry about Amazon jumping in on an item. You might have something that's doing really well. You're the only seller. But once Amazon realizes what you're trying to sell, and, uh, you know, they might have it up for, like, you're, you've been selling it for $40, but all of a sudden Amazon jumps in and they've got it for, they put it up for 25 Now they have basically an unlimited stock, and you either have to compete with Amazon or stop going and trying to sell the item. But when you're talking about exclusives, like Target exclusives, Walmart exclusives, Walgreen exclu exclusives, Amazon can't bring those items in. They can't get them. Those are exclusive to that retail store. So, uh, I mean, one thing that you can always tell that a reseller, an FBA person has been through a store because you'll see that tag on the shelf that says Target exclusive, on sale, 20% off, and that shelf is empty. You know, that yeah. item, it's sold out. And then, yeah. like, you'll go to 10 different Walgreens, and that item will just be sold out at every Walgreen. Or yeah. you'll go to 10 different Targets, and that item is sold out at every Target. No, and speaking of that too, do you know what Target and, and Walmart started doing? Um, whenever you're walking through the aisles, you'll see a tag on the end cap, well, and a end cap on the shelf that says new item, and it's like really noticeable. So go up to that item because they just stocked it. It's just brand new. And if you scan it, it, nine times out of ten, it won't even be on Amazon if it's a brand, brand new item. And you have to get on it and jump on it and send it out to FBA before everybody else does because the minute it's new item, dude, you have an opportunity to turn a profit right away. Yeah, you just can't get – don't go all in on it, you know. I mean, get that stuff into Amazon and keep track of whether or not Amazon gets it in stock. And then once they do, just get out of it. Just uh, stop – just, you know, blow it out at Amazon's price and get uh, move on to the next item. But, you know, that's retail arbitrage. It's just trying to find those items that you can do that with. And, I mean, it's uh, – that, that's kind of what I'm working on actually right now. I'm repricing some of my items, or most of them. And there's some that I know I may take a loss or I may just break even. So I'm just like, screw it, that's fine. Okay, so let's say you have, you find, uh, you know, a DVD or let's use uh, this camera, for example. I get, you know, 20 of these at, on clearance or whatnot for, you know, 20 bucks a piece. I can sell them on Amazon for $45, and then I send them in, and all of a sudden I sell half of them for 45 bucks. I've got my money back. I've made a little profit, and then Amazon comes in and sells them for $20, and they start getting them in stock, right? So now you just have to either keep your price at $45 and hope that they sell out, or drop down to 20 and compete with Amazon and just... Uh, you know, you made the money on the however many you sold up until the point where Amazon got them in stock. But I mean, if it's not quarter four, waiting for Amazon to sell out of anything can, from what I understand. Uh, yeah. Well, Amazon runs out a lot. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Amazon runs out of stock a lot, um, yeah. unless it's you know a huge seller, something that they have gotten just a ton of stuff they run out constantly, and it goes straight to the FBA sellers. Yeah, now one thing that you guys can look out, uh, check on, you can't check their inventory, but what you can do is put the item in your cart and then uh, put 99 of the item that you want to buy. And no, then no, just put 999. 999. Because that's a max. Okay, and then basically what will happen is it will say, only 72 of this item is available, or only maybe five of this item is available. That's how many Amazon has in stock. And you can do the same thing if you're trying to compete with somebody else that maybe they've got an item that, you know, you get, you scan an item and there's one in FBA for $10, and then the next one is $20, and it just goes like 20, 22, 22, 22, 24, 24, 24, 24. If you want to check and see how many the $10 guy has in stock before you try and get in on it, just do that. Check their uh, inventory by uh, adding the item to your cart, put in quantity 999, and then it'll tell you how many they have left in stock. And a lot of times I've found that that guy that's ruined the pricing, it's a one-off, you know, yeah, for Yeah, have like one or two items. Yeah. Yeah, one or two available. And I know we've said this before, guys. Don't be that guy. <laughs> yeah, price your stuff up. 
if anything. I mean, it's okay to be a few cents higher than the next lowest guy. You'll still hit the buy box, and uh, you'll still sell your items. I mean, there are so many times. I've got, uh, I sold, sent in two copies of this video game uh, about two or three weeks ago, and I was at, the lowest FBA price was like $14, and I sent them in at $20. And as soon as I sent them in, I got this little thing, like the notice from Amazon, adjust your price notice, you know, and that was one of the things, was that game. Well, I sold the first copy within a week for 20 bucks, and then I sold the next copy, like another, like two or three days ago, for the same price, 20 bucks. You know, I mean, it's just because you're not the lowest price doesn't mean that uh, you're not going to sell the item. And I mean, I'm at the point now where I don't even really, I, you got to use the other people's pricing as a guide, but I mean, you don't have to be the lowest price, and sometimes you can be ridiculously higher than the next price just to, because they're going to sell out eventually, and then it's going to hit your price, and you're going to go. But, well, I've been higher than people, and people have bought mine instead of the guy that, you know, undercut everybody. Because I think, you know, when there when there's that huge undercut, I think that, like, for me, as a, as a buyer, I wonder what's wrong with that person's. Exactly. What's wrong you know what with I mean? it? I think there has to be something wrong with theirs. It's got to be a second or, you know, something has to be wrong for them to cut the price that much. Yeah, I mean, that's why uh, with a lot of high-end clothing, you can't, on eBay, you know, if you're taking good pictures and you're taking good measurements and everything, you can't put that stuff up for, you know, 20, you can't put a $500 coat up for $20 and expect it to sell really fast because everybody that l looks at that coat is going to be like, what's wrong with it? You know, they're just going to assume that you're trying to hide something or get get over on them somehow. Yeah, price accordingly. I mean, on on any platform, you need to price accordingly to what the product is, what the market will allow you to price for. Otherwise, yeah. you're just shooting yourself in the foot anyways, yeah. you know? Exactly. There's no reason to leave money on the table. Right. I mean, it, yeah, no reason. And like RB3 was saying, you know, that you're competing a lot of times uh, with people that are just trying to make a few extra bucks for beer money, you know. And I mean, uh, somebody that's a real professional is trying to maximize their profit, but there are a lot of people that are technically doing it full time, or they think they are, or they want to, or whatever, and they just don't know crap about what they don't know what they're doing, you know. And they, uh, if they make a dollar on something, they're happy. And I mean, the but the more uh, basically the reason that FBA is so good and Amazon is so good is because it keeps those people out and it prices them out of the market and it gets them kind of uh, to the point where they can't really do what they're doing anymore and then all that are left are the real the people that do know what they're doing and that uh, know how to price their items uh, correctly and all that but yeah I mean we went over <laughs> tons of stuff today I think this Whoa. is a we had a good show. Do you have anything you want to add before we leave, Caesar? No, I'm just trying to wake up and I'm looking at the feed and everyone's talking about breakfast, dude. <laughs> We're all going to want, So can I add this? I what picked this up for anywhere from five to fifteen. I forgot what exactly it was. I got it in in the state sale for like I said, five to fifteen. It just sold for eight. $89. Nice. Yeah. And it, it's, oh, man, cool. it's got a high ring, too, if I'm right. So I took a gamble on it. Yeah, I'll take one. <laughs> so. It's cool, Adam. That's not, that's not bad. Yeah. No, I always good, like man. those uh, $10 into 90 What would you say? You paid 15 for it? Five to fifteen. I don't remember what the hell I paid. Oh, that's it, it was. It was in a, a sale that had a complete in box N64 with some brand new sealed games. Another reseller ended up with those, and like all the other resellers, they didn't even look at these. Yeah, well, the guy with the Nintendo 64 probably made out a hell of a lot better than you, so shame on you for not being first one. Um, he paid <laughs> 40 or 60 for the completed box 64, 
and the games I think he paid like one or two dollars each, so he did make out pretty good with that. Yeah, especially if it was if there were any games that were actually desirable. But anyway, there guys. Was, yeah, there was one James Bond game, if I'm right. Oh, Goldeneye. Yeah, that's not that great for even new in box. It's not worth a whole lot, like fifty bucks probably. If I'm right, I can't remember for sure, but yeah, they're uh, like the Mario games and the Zelda games, especially like Zelda. Oh my goodness. Oh, dude, Zelda, dude. Yeah. I mean, new in box. Those some of those are worth hundreds of dollars. Uh, but yeah. anyway. It's time to wrap this up, guys. It is that time again. We're going to open this thing up. Uh, go check the Reseller Wake Up Facebook group. That's my group. Uh, we're going to have a link to the show or to the after show hangout posted there right after we get off here. Uh, if you go to the top of the screen, you'll see that banner. It's that poorly drawn uh, Reseller Wake Up banner. If you look, uh, scroll down, we're doing a contest. I'm trying to get some submissions for the best banner. And uh, basically, whoever I choose is going to get this kick ass cool toads brand <laughs> cell phone clip this is the one that uh, actually Chad uses one of these and he told me about it and I bought one and then after I bought one I started I found this one so I'm just gonna give it away uh, hey dude I vote for uh for Brian's gold banner dude <laughs> I don't know I'm still liking the one that me and you collaborated on uh yeah, that one. Uh, that one's probably still. Yeah, I like those I've ones just, with the silhouette figures. So I like those, but the, it needs to be uh, dialed in a little bit. It's just not quite, quite there yet. If it gets dialed in and uh, they figure out, uh, I think Rose is the one that uh, yeah. posted those up. Yeah, if she figures out how to dial it in a little bit and uh, tune it up, then yeah, she might. Ha she might have it for sure. But you know, when, I, when I first things. saw it, I was. I said to myself, you know what? She's onto something. I like yeah, it. exactly. I like kind of the reminded idea. me of the mighty mighty Bustums. Yeah, I like the idea. I like the idea. Just gotta tune it up a little bit. Anyway, thanks for everybody for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. After this video goes off, I'm gonna post everybody's links uh, to their channels on uh, in the com or in the detail section. If you have any questions for us, comments on the show, any ideas, uh, anybody has somebody that you want to see come on that I need to reach out to. Uh, Go ahead after the show goes offline. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what's going on, guys. And gals, I appreciate all of you. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you all Monday. No show Thursday for Thanksgiving. No show Friday for Black Friday. So I'm taking a four day. I'm doing a four How day. Dare you? <laughs> hey man, it's, it's, it's uh it's high cholesterol day, man. Let it go. <laughs> see you guys.